You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Hey, Jordan, your usual drink tonight? Yes, thank you. So, where's Eric and Ryan? Uh, They're on their way. I wanted to listen to your latest podcast, but where can I download the episodes again? You can download all of our episodes at movieguyspodcast.podme.com. You can also find us on every social media platform. Every social media platform? That's awesome. Hey, it looks like your friends are here. Let me get the first round for you guys. I was really excited to see this movie. I mean, like, really freaking excited to see it. Uh, The trailers, anything with Elizabeth Moss in it, I'm interested because she's not a bad actress, and I like to see what she does in it. However, my feelings after I left the theater were not so enthusiastic. Eric, were you excited to see this at all? The trailer certainly was a hype. Like, few trailers nowadays really can give you enough to want to go see it without it already being like a brand, you know, like I don't need to see a Star Wars trailer to know I'm already going to go see it type of thing. But for this type of, of movie, because I've already seen uh, The Invisible Man, Hollow Man, um, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I mean, you know, wherever The Invisible Man has popped up before, I like I've already seen this movie, but you see the trailer like, oh, this is a different type of movie. Uh, written and directed by Ryan. Who is this? This is Lee Wynell. Oh, he was the guy in Saw. Yep, he made Upgrade two years ago, sure which is a did. really good movie. People out there who haven't seen it, you should go check out Upgrade. You know what's what was really fun is I did not know he directed this until until I walked into the theater and I and it and it, and I and I sat down and I had a smile on my face when I saw his name because I was like, man. He was the other guy in the first Saw. He co-wrote the first Saw. And to see him grow from that into, I will say, a pretty decent, well-made movie, I was, I was, I was really happy to see that his career has taken an upswing. Sure. It's kind of cool to see him do that. Uh, so some of the things I'm disappointed in this movie, what you're not going to get How? right off the... Well, How? to some things, some things, some things. So in doing research for the film, I found out that this was made by Blumhouse, which they just bought the rights to the name The Invisible Man because they're going, Universal is going to reboot their Monster Universe again. And since Blumhouse now owns the rights to the name Invisible Man, uh, Universal is going to make Invisible Woman. Woo! So that's all that it has. But reading up to it, though... They said that this was a reimagining remake of the original Invisible Man. I was kind of hoping they would do some callbacks. Yeah, it is a 2020 film. It's a little bit different compared to it was in the 30s and 40s and novel by H.G. Wells. But I was hoping he would do the whole bandage thing for just one scene. I did. I was hoping... He did he though? You, yes, you. Uh, yeah, you didn't catch it. I saw that she was in the hospital and a guy... No. Ah, uh, well, I, okay. If it's about as good as it's gonna get, I saw that and I said, "Oh, okay, that's that's it." Like, yeah, I guess that's the bandage scene. Okay, so uh, I must sound like a fucking asshole, and I'm and I'm uh, and I'm ready to go fisticuffs with Ryan. Uh, one of the things that I was nervous about with this movie is that Elizabeth Moss does make a lot of really extreme pheasant, pheasant, feminism films where the men always look like the assholes, and I was thinking that this was gonna be that. Ryan, do you agree with that or not? Well, what other? I I am very uh, I have a big blind spot in Elizabeth Moss's filmography outside of Mad Men. Get him to the Greek. Uh, so I don't Handmaid's know what other Tale. Movies. Well, hey, let's take oh, a look. Yeah, I don't watch I don't watch Handma- Handmaid's Tale. Uh, uh, but she, she wanted also she won an Emmy in and Golden Globe the pack. Uh, I don't know what that the is. The old man and the gun. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I have no idea. I've not I've not watched a single episode of Handmaid's Tale. You should. Is there wait? Is there visible castration? Like, do you see them chopping off some balls and dicks? No, not for me. Not for me. Sorry. <laughs> gotcha. No, I, I was I was interested to see what they're gonna do with it. So let's just break this movie down. 
Um, this is Elizabeth Moss's character, and she is dating. She's not married, right? Or is she married? She's dating this guy? Dating. Okay. Yeah, I mean, she's... exclusive. You know, they're pretty... Okay. The kitchen is the other one where the women rebel against their husbands that she was in. Mm. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, but but in a nutshell, in the beginning part here, uh, she's 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 a woman who is dating this really like Steve Job esque or Elon Musk kind of guy, um, and she escapes because of a physically and emotionally abusive relationship, and she lives with her sister's friend or friend of a friend or whatever. This guy was with his daughter. And then all of a sudden shenanigans begin because she thinks that he is that her suicide, that her boyfriend who committed suicide is now stalking her. So this is where I call bullshit a lot, right? <sighs> no, can't call bullshit yet because it's only five minutes in the episode. I don't want to ruin the ending for everybody. Cool. So don't want to do that yet. Um, okay. So, Eric, you sent us a text today, a little behind the scenes here, and I want the fans to hear exactly what you said because I was intrigued walking into it. You said, well, damn, that movie uh, exceeded my expectations for sure. Yeah, That was your text today to our our group. How did this this do that for you? Well, because the bar was set with Hollow Man, and that's what I'm walking into, and... I think what they did a fantastic job with was these camera shots, man. It, it really was was very good tension building. These these moments where Elizabeth Moss's character Cecilia is really rattled, obviously from I mean, a very powerful opening scene of her making this this escape. That that's that's a very real scene. It's hard to do. She planned everything, a step by step plan. So I think that she did a very good job at acting how that is supposed to be acted, you know, just kind of adrenaline, but scared. And it carried throughout the movie because she had those moments where, and this is where the camera play comes in because it just gives an empty frame. It just gives, you know what I mean? Just a doorway or a corner and it just sits there and you, she gives you the look like she can feel it. Like she, she just knows someone who's been in a relationship that long, who's, slept up to, next to somebody for so long that you just feel that person there. I think she did a great job with it. And I think the camera work, the way they did those corner shots, were amazing. Because I'm looking hard to see the curtain move or the, you know, something rattle, the knife fall off the counter, you know, or the, um, oh, the, the cold breath. The cold breath scene was really cool. That was a good touch. That's what you, you kind of want to see is this, this, these moments. And um, I think it was really... Really well, uh, how they how they did that, how this guy was really stalking her, really setting her up. I I just liked that it was just more than, well, I guess just some Kevin Bacon rapist, I guess. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, there is no uh, pulling down the woman's shirt and playing with her nipple scene in this. Ryan, what do you think? Do you actually share the same thing with Eric here? Yeah, I I agree. The, a lot of the camera work is really great. Um, the I, she's framed a lot when she is by herself and she's not um, she doesn't take up uh, half the frame she's usually in like a fourth of the frame to one side or the other there's a lot of empty space obviously for the invisible man to hang out the thing that I liked about it though is uh, the, uh, I like the sound mixing uh, the sound editing I liked how when you are supposed supposed to be going seeing things through her eyes there's usually one sound that is isolated whether it's like breathing whether it's her feet on the on the floor um the waves when she's at his house um that that i I feel like that was probably the smartest thing yes to do for this movie like because it starts right though right from the the get-go when it's all quiet and she's trying to sneak out and like it's you you usually hear one sound and then she'll make a loud noise and they'll get quiet then and then as she moves to the as she progresses you'll hear one sound the whole time until she makes like another loud noise or like the dog whines or something and the the score doesn't hit until she's like past the threshold of his his control 
Well, see, that's what's good about this, though, is because finally this movie's not giving us what a lot of horror movies, which I'm not going to classify this as a horror movie, but go with me. We're not getting that jump scare loud bass noise that I noticed. Like, there was none of that really in here. Which I was... There's only one I can remember, and that's that's really just the smash cut to the the breakfast cooking. Right. Like when the egg and the bacon are sizzling. Okay, so let's talk about that real quick. So that's something that I was intrigued about. So, I mean, clearly with this movie being called The Invisible Man in the trailers, we know what's going to happen. So when she's alone in the house for the first time, right... And we start seeing, what was it like? Uh, was like a knife fell, and then he turned up the gas on the stove and everything to kind of fuck with her. Mm-hmm. We didn't get much of him fucking with her. We just got that little scene, and then we got the night scene when she's sleeping with the with the little girl, and he pulls the sheets, and he's clearly ready to show himself for some reason at that point. I was wanting more of a haunted house kind of feel and i was wondering not knowing what kind of movie i was going to get was this whole movie going to be set in that one night when things start taking a shit and she starts to go after him one-on-one like i thought that was going to be the movie i didn't think it was going to go the way it went so we got from her in the kitchen scene from her sleeping in bed to the uh covers being pulled off all the way to the paint scene when she's in the attic throwing it down is this good build-up is this happening too soon eric what do you feel about that i mean there was a few parts in this movie where but it might become with every scary movie where you're just like wait why wait why would you do that but that was a pretty good part when she had to go into the attic because she heard the cell phone but like if you're suspecting that this person is invisible and then your life is in danger. And listen, like, the cell phone that shouldn't be in the attic of this house is now in the attic of this house. That's, like, holy shit, you know? Right. But I guess, but I guess at the same part, she's pretty much painted. Because at this part, too, uh, unfortunately, hasn't her sister already died? No, not yet, and you spoiled it. <laughs> Because <laughs> I was going to talk about that. Oh, I'm not spoiling. I mean, well, yeah. I guess. No, you're not spoiling. We're Movie Guys Podcast. I was saying spoiling for the show. But anyway, but I, I mean, that was, a, a, I think, a pretty good uh, scene, to be honest, um, just because uh, we, it's the first time we get to kind of see the suit and just kind of see that it's not like him being invisible. It's actually him in, in a suit, almost. You get to see this kind of this, uh, um, almost like a dimpled kind of armor-esque kind of thing with the paint and i think everything was just done really well although uh there were a lot of callbacks right i mean that ladder did get a lot of play the mace yeah is a I, like you you'd think you had to do a little bit more of the coffee wasn't that in from hollow man yeah uh, was that yeah there was something like that was in hollow man uh, rain, i like to blood. obviously it was coffee it was blood and hollow man the lady throws all the the blood on the floor all oh, right Okay, so okay, so this is where it starts my critique since you brought it up, Eric, and I wonder what Ryan's opinion is about this one. So a uh, little behind the scenes here. I don't play video games hardly at all, but there's one video game that I play with my friends from work, and we play Fallout 76, and we were playing it tonight, and I was telling them about the movie. They wanted to know what popcorn was and what, is, uh, what I was I was going to give it and stuff, and I was telling them my opinions, and then I told them that this is actually not a mad scientist who accidentally makes himself invisible it is literally like a like a full body suit and it has cameras everywhere on it and it kind of like bends light and stuff to make him invisible and one of the guys that was playing the game with the knight said oh so he made a predator suit i said yeah and that's my one of my critiques is i hate this suit concept this suit concept was not it was very cheesy especially towards the end where you get the big climactic battle Right, I just, I just feel that this all like leotard suit with these cameras on it is just nonsense. Well, Why? What do you think he, about? He, Go I, ahead, guys. I, I don't think it's nonsense. I'll cut to, to Ryan. I know it's a little question, so if you don't think it's nonsense, I want to hear you first. Then I'll. Respond. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's nonsense at all. I think that, I mean, there is tech that they're working on right now that kind of does similar functions to what not on the scale obviously um to what they're doing now um or what they did in this movie so i mean this does it's an attempt to ground it in a sense of reality you know it's not just some 
magic potion or some accidental chemical mixture that made them this way. It's a tech genius who's using the thing he he is best at to torture the person he thinks wronged him. Because as as the brother states, um, or as she states at some point, I don't remember who, um, he's all these women come after him for his money, and he could have had anyone. You know, and if he's this controlling person that is gonna, you know, do all do all these things to keep her in line, uh, as soon as she escapes and breaks up with him, that's that's like the big slap in the face because that means she got one over on him, and, and a big ego narcissist isn't gonna allow that. I was going to ask uh, about the logistics of the suit, uh, just because uh, functionality aside. The, obviously, he's still very alive, Adrian is, and so this dude's still got to eat and shit and sleep. So, uh, is he just is he just going is he taking a lift back home? By the way, this movie brought to you by Lyft, everyone. When, right, uh, I saw that. <laughs> when you are in a, in a in a jam or an emergency, just know that you can uh, take Lyft. Remember that Lyft. We're not rapists yeah, or murderers. Four th- 4.30 in the morning, you're running for your life, catch a lift. And yep. he drives, like, what, like an hour away? He's like, oh, whatever, beach, that's really far away. And it's like, it's yeah. like, yeah, they're given the illusion that it's that it's a long distance because of Golden Gate Bridge and, and all that. Okay, and guys. no questions asked either. I'm sure you put on no. some a podcast or some smooth jazz, too, and they just they wrote it out. So, I would like to think that he'd listen to Movie Guys podcasts on the way. you damn right he did. Damn right, he fucking did. So, um, of course, I'm into going to this movie, l- interested to see what the fight's going to be. And the fight is, how are they going to film uh, her struggling, fighting against an invisible man? How are they going to make this different from what I've seen before? And I will give the movie praise on this. I really enjoyed this kitchen fight, I would say. Kitchen fight, you know, when they're... It, uh, yeah, she, sure. She yeah. played it well. She played it really fucking well. I really enjoyed... How they uh, how they did this fight? It was believable for the concept of what we were being shown. Do you guys agree with this? Sure. Well, there's a few things leading up to it, though. I I really do feel that like for her character Cecilia, who's been through such a traumatic experience, and then through such a short time, she goes into you know wherever into um, her friend's house, and then. Two weeks later, her fiance kills himself, and then suddenly she starts acting funny and saying all this stuff. And everyone seems to be like, oh, Cecilia, you're just so fucking weird and get over it type of thing. You're crazy. And it's just like, why would she send that that email? The sister was just like, oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. The email says it all. It's right here. It's just like, really, your sister comes in and says, what email? You're not going to add, like, a few questions? Or that or that girl that she just gave $100,000 to, or however much for her college, for some reason, she's not going to say anything if Cecilia hits her with a goddamn 20-foot doll's heme slap? Right. Like, and, and just out of nowhere, too. All, both things, the email and the slap, completely out of character. And both the other characters completely took it. Lana, listen, that's an over-critique and that's a big reach. I get that just to move the plot, the, the plot along because it needs to make Cecilia uh, go further and descend further into like her craziness. Like, no one's going to believe me. Everyone's against me, and it's him. I, I, I get that, but um, this is where the movie kind of took a turn in this halfway point. Yes, this movie did take a turn because... Uh, the boyfriend Adrian, right? Adrian sends an email, you know, disguised as her, as 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 the main character, to the sister and says, "You're a bitch. I don't want to talk to you." Blah blah blah. So eventually, they get a chance to meet each other for dinner, and they're meeting at a public restaurant. And she's like, "Hey, I discovered something when I snuck into his house. I discovered this suit with a bunch of cameras." And all of a sudden, the camera does this quick cut of a floating butcher knife, and it cuts. Her sister's Woo! throat, and she dies. And I and and this is where I'm like kind of chilling in the seat, kind of just sunk in in the theater. And as soon as the throat gets cut, I sit up and I'm like, "What the fucking shit? What like, the fuck was that?" I'm dude? like, "Okay, I'm in this movie." Ryan, what do you feel about this sister throat cutting scene? Did this shock you? It is. I mean, it didn't shock me really. 
Um, I, I knew, like, I knew the sister was going to die at some point. I was a bit surprised that it happened, um, in that scene so abruptly, but this goes back to what Eric said. I have in complete agreement about the, like, she has a shitty support structure. Like, it seems like real nice at first, but then like one thing goes wrong and they're like, get out of here, Cecilia, you're crazy. Um, and like this situation, like I when that happened, and she's just standing there, like she's sitting there holding the knife. I'm thinking like nobody saw the floating knife. Like the restaurant full of people, nobody saw a thing. Like there wasn't one people watcher in that room. No. How did he? No. How did he bring it in? Like did he, no, no. He... Well, no, he he did bring it in. He he. I mean, clearly he walked in. Grab... Well, he's asking, how was it not seen? Oh, how did nobody see like, a loading knife? How did he knife? conceal it? Dude, like, is, there's no, is there a pocket in that suit that he has? That, that Wasn't there a knife on a table? That's a that's a big old butcher table? knife, right? Is that? I I thought it was a knife that that he that they took from uh, her friend's house, the like the knife she found in the baggie. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was that knife. I thought it was that knife too, just simply because it had her uh, fingerprints on it. You know what would have been better for that scene though? Because you guys are right, you're onto something. What would have been better is that if there would have been like. You know, like that. You know, like that table waiter guy behind her cooking like steak, Taylor. whatever. And they're cooking like steak or something behind her. You know, like hey, you know. And then he puts down a butcher knife. You like the camera keeps on focusing on the butcher knife to make us think something. And then that's how the butcher knife gets picked up and cut. That would have been a quick, easy explaining. Because yeah, you're right. This guy's invisible. He's not going to be carrying around a butcher knife with a floating butcher knife throughout the uh, throughout the uh, uh, restaurant. I, I, I think but very good would've... catch. Uh, some people would also be arguing about security cameras, and they gave it the one-line excuse at the end. Did you hear them about security no. cameras? Or at least for the hospital, not for the restaurant. What was but, the What was the one-line excuse? It was a uh, oh, yeah, it was something like it was uh, her friend, the the police officer, the detective guy, was just like, uh, yeah, and we have it on video that some really weird stuff happened. <laughs> what he said, some really oh, strange yeah. things happened. <laughs> It's like, really, dude? You have a camera of people just, like, shooting themselves, like, running into a hallway. All of them stop because they're visibly being beaten, then shooting themselves. It was some really strange activity. It's like, no, you, you kind of have everything that connects the dots now, don't you? Rich, yeah. which I'm going to go... Yeah, go ahead, Ryan. No, I was... Another thing I thought was funny and, like, f- seriously, like, one of those moments is when, like, this... I think it's the third wave of cops come down the hallway after she like catches him and, and put, like hits the suit. And like this guy is running with his buddy. His buddy just gets knocked down and he just, he like stops, looks around and then points the gun at Elizabeth Moss. Who's laying on the ground, like 50 feet away. Just says, lay down, lay down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I thought that was funny. No, Cause, cause chuckle. mutant powers. He's thinking of his he, training. He be too careful. <laughs> He's <thinking of> <laughs> so she goes, so she goes to this mental hospital. I'm like, oh, my God, this movie's taking this turn, you know, and they're like, hey, guess what? Uh, you're preggers. And I'm just like, oh, that's why he's after her, because, you know, he wants to have a kid and shit. And then she does something crazy, which I liked. You know, she steals a pen from talking to his brother, who is his lawyer. And the brother always seems kind of off to me. So I was like, it, I mean, like, clearly the brother's in on this, right? And then, like, she's in the shower, and she starts stabbing her. You know, I mean, she's. I mean, she's not. She's not getting attention. She's for real, right? I mean, she's starting to slash her. Yeah, wrist. she's going down. She's going down the road, not across the street. Yeah, and then that's when he attacks, and this scene happens. Question: There's a scene in the trailer, and I watched it uh, before we did the review here. Uh, there's a scene in the trailer when she's taking a shower, and you have the handprint on the shower door. That's not in this movie. Oh, and from the trailer, you mean? Yeah. That's also the poster too. Oh man, I think they got they must have got cut. I was just asking because there was two times that she was in a shower <laughs> setting in this movie, and I was like, "Oh, is this the handprint?" Because well, to me, that's more cool than the than the than the breath behind they her. Got cut. They got, they make the trailer before the movie, so yeah, you're right. Sometimes they shoot stuff specifically for the trailer with no intention of ever putting it in the. But movie. But that's the poster too, so I'm just like, and she's in a shower twice, so whatever but you're right though but you're right eric i mean like do you have like or ryan said did you have like how many waves of cops it's like it's like playing a video game like okay here comes wave four and it was always like two cops yo quick um, responders too very quick so this is where i call bullshit on this is where i call bullshit on adrian's mo every single cop that we see him uh defeat he did not kill 
he severely wounded or hurt because there's one guy where like where 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 it's like Adrian had the fucking gun, shot him in the knee, guy screams like anybody would and knocks him out. But he kills one cop by walking away in the back, and then he kills another cop outside. I just find it interesting that he didn't kill all the cops. Like, why would he just beat him up if, if I mean, what's his M.O.? Is his M.O. not to kill, but just to get her? Like, that was confusing I, to me. I, I or do you know. guys I, think I'm just reaching on this one? Well, he's he's not a, I don't know, man. Like, the guy's, you'd think that he's not a killer, but then he leaves the hospital to go kill the little girl. Allegedly. So, th- since you said that, let's bring this up. Okay, let's just talk about the ending and bring this up, because I'm going to call bullshit a little bit. So, she th- she sees a photo from Adrian's brother and says, he, I was there, he committed suicide, here are the photos. Yeah. And at the end of the movie, right, towards the end of the movie, when they defeat and kill the Invisible Man, it is Adrian's brother who was the lawyer this da, whole time. Da, like da. Scooby-Doo kind of style, right? And then the SWAT team invade his house, the brother who has allegedly killed himself, and they find him tied up in a basement. So here are my questions for you guys. Number one, did Adrian actually kill? I'm sorry, did Adrian actually do all this stuff? Did Adrian actually stalk, right? Actually, go back to that, though, because if you're saying then that his brother was the only one that actually killed people... Yeah, did Adrian actually do all this? Number one. And then number two, wouldn't there be a lot of questions for the police? Oh, he killed the sister. Like, he... Well, wait a minute. What, did he, though? Because, because here's the police question. We found you tied in your basement, but we also have photo evidence of you slashed your wrist. So why would you fake your death and now you're tied, in, tied up in a basement? Oh, perfect, dude. Yeah, that would be a good question there. Or am I wrong? Well, yeah. you know, no, you could wrap that. I up don't think you're wrong. Say, I, I understand that, but oh, oh, the brother drugged me, and well, no, because the police would have to. That's a good that's... fucking question. Yeah, no, I agree wholeheartedly with you, Jordan. That was one of the things I was oh, having issues wrapping my head. There around. it is, Jordan busted this fucking movie wide open. Yeah, like I mean, like the downfall of this movie is the ending because this makes no sense. Like, why would you? have her kill the invisible man unmask him and it's like it's been the brother this whole time so it's like well oh how about all right maybe he was uh actually innocent this entire time and this was all master plan from the brother and then this is just her in her disillusion and her crazy setting up for the invisible woman she does have she does have the uh suit at the end of the movie when she sighs and walks off into the credits we're going to talk about that scene here in a second because because that's another reason that's part of my evidence of why this is crazy but again though the police would say hey great we found you you were kidnapped and tied up in your basement but why do we have these photos of your wrist being slit and you're dead and why was there a funeral uh, ashes and why did you five million dollars to the it's strange it's strange. So that scene needs to be cut. Having either have Adrian be the psycho stalker, invisible man, or have the brother. You can't have both because now you're doing Billy and Stu from Scream and it's not making any sense. Yeah. Well, my my thing is, and I watching this movie, it felt like it was kind of fighting with itself that it wanted to be one thing and then it was being pulled into another thing um if you guys have seen upgrade um it's a sci-fi action flick but there when it is it is very well paced uh, in terms of build up and then the actual payoff uh, the, the the action scenes and then it'll you know, the it'll uh, have its falling action and then it'll ramp back up again. It's re- it, it does pacing incredibly well. This movie you have these these long stretches where it's it's you know there's no dialogue. It's nearly silent where she's like walking around the house finding things things like that. Um, but then it just kind of hits into the fight in the in the kitchen and I think that. Like some of these things might have been studio mandated. Like we need to have, because I, I, did, I honestly didn't think 
when we got now granted it was fucking cool how they did it um i'm all for it but i didn't think they were going to have uh the reveal of him actually stalking her uh when she throws the paint out of the attic and you like it splat because like you think he's you know somewhere else but then he's right and like right in her face that was a cool that was a cool reveal um but i feel like it wanted to be this more psychological than like a thriller oh, thing yeah that's but like two the studio movies. man this first half was was that and the second half was the other but i think that's like the director wanted to be the more meditative is it all in her head it did he was adrian really this abusive person because of the way he's presented near the end he's like nebbish but that can be all like he's nebbish and endearing but that could just be a controlling thing as well like to get lull you into the sense of security um, and like, like he's at, but he's adamant he did not kill her sister, and she ends up killing him. And then when she talks to her friend right at the end before the credits roll, like you, you still know if she's fully there or not. Right. But I, like there were, but I feel like there was some mandate by the studio to make it, you know, a sort of more concrete. There is a bad guy sort of thing that where the director felt forced to do this, so it kind of seems half-hearted both ways. Well, you're right. Okay, okay. So, so this is the end of the movie, which I wanted to talk about. Then let's go with that before we get into her popcorn ratings. She calls Adrian. The brother's dead. She goes to the house. They have dinner. Well, they're not having dinner, but they're sitting down at the table for dinner. And she's clearly wearing a wire. And she says, "I just need you to admit that you did this stuff." And he's like, "I, I didn't." Blah 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 blah. And then you know she cries, and he says this one word that was in a text. And er, and later too, when she was mental hospital, where he says blah 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 blah, surprise. Beautiful. And I think and I and I think I know you better than anyone. That shouldn't be a surprise. That shouldn't be a surprise. And the well, way no, he delivered a big, it. There was a delay there. You get the, that delivery. Yeah. So, so be, I uh, think that's surprise. the moment where she realizes, okay, he actually did do this stuff. She goes to the powder room, so to speak, puts on the suit, and then grabs the knife and kills him the same way that he allegedly killed her sister. And that's where I call bullshit. Okay, because there's not going to be a sequel to this movie because this is different from Universals, right? There's not going to be an Invisible Man Part 2 with Elizabeth Moss. You have to finish clean. And I am walking away from this movie saying, did Adrian actually do this shit? Because... Because we only focused on the brother and how jealous the brother was of Adrian. So did he find the shit, kidnap Adrian, stage the whole fucking thing? And then did Elizabeth Moss kill an innocent man? Crazy, maybe? I don't know. Did he smack her up a little bit? Sure. (laughs) Maybe. We don't know. We see him running at her in the beginning of the movie and yes, he went absolutely crazy and ridiculous by punching out uh, her friend's, uh, her uh, sister's window there of her car. But that's all we see. Yeah. So we don't know. And that's where I left with a bad taste in my mouth. What do you guys feel about this? About her putting on the suit and killing him, cutting his throat the way he allegedly killed her sister. You guys think this is bullshit that we did not have a clear cut? Yes, I did this. Or do you guys think this is great? What do you think? No, I, I mean the way that uh, I think it was a good way to, to end to, to end it. It really, it really is. I mean, re- regardless of, of whether uh, or, or what invisible crimes Adrian had done or in what actions he was doing while invisible, he's still abusive. And it uh, obviously it it was a big factor in this entire movie. And she's traumatized for life, I'm sure. But uh, much like the kitchen, she has uh, uh, turned her her fear into motivation, you know, and uh, she's going to come out better for it. So, I Ryan, what do you feel about yeah. this ending kill? I mean, I'm all for ambiguous endings. I love them. Uh, I think that when it's supported by the script, that they work incredibly well. Um, as we talked about a few minutes ago, I don't feel satisfied with this ending because it feels uh, different than what was set up going into it. Um, Cause it, they did. I feel like they definitively stated that he is the one who was behind this whole thing, without actually coming out and saying that he did it. Um, but yeah, it's it's fine, I guess. It's fine. All right. Well, then I hope these are not going to be fine because I'm interested to hear what you guys think. 
Eric, let's go with you first, bud. What is going to be your popcorn rating for the 2020 version of The Invisible Man? I, listen, man, uh, I enjoyed this movie. I gave it a large bag. I think it wasn't taking itself too seriously. And the reason why is because it didn't give any further explanation than you didn't already need. So um, you got that Adrian was the lead in fiber optic technology, that he was gifted and all that. You got to see all the all the degrees, all the diplomas on the wall, uh, uh, and just just his academics. You get to see the lab. You get to see that he's obviously very well off. You get to see obviously that that he left a lot to, to her, and that's probably no thing. Um, and so the the suit I think kind of uh, helped it out. Also, I like that he was he was he he as a character was invisible the entire time. I didn't know what this guy looked like. I mean, we had the the mild opening scene, but I I like that um, we weren't haunted by a face that he was completely unknown to us as well. I think that was great too. The music. Or the lack thereof. I think it was very Hitchcock. I loved it. There's a, a moment where she's walking in the house, and just like Ryan said, there was there was no music. There was no suspense, eerie build up. It was just you in a heartbeat. And I think those are those are missing out on a lot of movies. Uh, it happened the same one for that uh, that Don't Speak movie or whatever the hell. Don't breathe. Yeah. Or, yeah. Don't breathe. Um, they they had those those moments too. I think that really works out. Um. This movie, I think, did take a, a quite a quite a dip uh, in the second and uh, third and uh, second act. It's, I'll just do two acts here. Uh, uh, but um, all in all, they just kind of wrapped it up real quick and uh, and just and just moved along. Like, yeah, the cop wouldn't his, her friend wouldn't be assigned to the case that he was a victim in. It's a bias. Uh, a lot of times they wouldn't. But again, we're not here to ask questions. We're just here to. To have a good time. I think the camera work was great. A good thrilling uh, parts. The movie did what it needed to do. And I enjoyed it. I, I think it's it's a standard. Uh, uh, or your a, a good horror film. Uh, mixed it with your. What's it? They call it mystery. And a sci-fi too. So yeah. I think it was better than Hollow Man. Yeah. This is definitely better. So, so you gave this one a large bag. Yeah. I gave it a large bag. Just because. Uh, yeah. One, it's, that, it's been a while since I've seen a scary movie. That uh, that hit. Well, I'm gonna give this one a medium bag. When I left the theater, I was gonna give it a, 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 a I was gonna give it a small bag. But uh, surprise, I watched the movie today of recording, and I had a few hours to digest after I walked out of the theater, and I was ready to give it a, a small bag just because of the questions that I had that you both agreed upon. It's just like this doesn't make sense. That makes it not a good movie because of this huge plot hole. Uh, but. I do like what Elizabeth Moss did as the character. She's very good at her facial expressions to uh, to portray terror. And I felt for her. And I was kind of disappointed that we get the coffee grounds because I was curious if we were going to get the footsteps. I was just wanted to see that for some reason. Uh, but I thought everybody besides Adrian played their parts pretty well because Adrian was nothing of a character until the end. And when I got him, I was kind of disappointed. Um, he was not who I thought he was going to be. To me, he was not threatening. Uh, maybe physically, uh, to me, he just wasn't threatening. But uh, overall, the movie was fun. I may see it again in the future. So for that, I'm going to give it a medium bag. It's okay. It's fine. It's mediocre. It's okay. Medium bag. Ryan, what's your popcorn rating for The Invisible Man 2020? Uh, I'm going to give it a medium bag as well. Uh, from a technical standpoint, it's a very, very fine movie. Uh, I agree. Elizabeth Moss has a very expressive face, and it comes quite handy in this movie. Because again, there's a lot of uh, moments, long moments, where it's just facial expressions from her. There, there, there's there's some fun stuff in the script. A lot of callbacks that come in, like you mentioned, the mace and the ladder. There's the um, the uh, fire extinguisher that they use right. near the beginning comes yeah that comes into the finale and, oh, well, I guess and the, also the paint the fight. because because he was painting and the paint yeah he yeah. was painting yeah um because he's not gonna ask his daughter to help him paint and um the what what stops it from being a large bag for me is a lot of the questions that um jordan brought up about the ending and and sort of the ambiguousness of it all where it doesn't really seem set up for that um, and then things that Eric talked about, about these things that it's like, it, it's sort of the reaction I had to watching the end of Finding Dory. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that Pixar movie mm -hmm. where 
these fish are just jumping from bowl to bowl, bag, stroller. No one, no, none of the humans notice a thing to where it escalates so far to where an octopus is driving a shipping truck off of a bridge. Just kind of, you know, really, really. Um, but yeah, it's this is a, a definitely enjoyable movie. Probably the best early, um, the early quarter early year horror release that i've seen I mean, us from last year you know, excluded don't really see good horror movies in january or february i guess we're in march now though yeah, yeah this was released in february but yeah really but for the winter blockbuster now there we go yeah thank god for deadpool it's no us i'm curious though i'm curious though are, are, did they have they just completely given up on the dark universe? So in the beginning of the episode, I said that they are doing a, a, a completely redo of the dark universe. They're not calling the dark universe anymore. But Blumhouse, who made this movie, bought the rights to the title "The Invisible Man." So when Universal Studios does their dark universe again, or whatever they're going to call it, they cannot call the character "The Invisible Man." They're going to have the Invisible Woman. Oh, okay. Because they, they, I, it would have been funny and kind of ironic. Um, now, we know he's been cleared of charges. We know that Amber Heard uh, is, is a crazy, crazy person. But Johnny Depp was cast as the Invisible Man. He was. In the Dark Universe. Hmm. So, like, that would have been fun, like, funny, ironic, haha. If he got cast in this movie to be the abusive, the abusive uh, significant other. Mm-hmm. Have been ironic, but Universal uh, co-produced and distributed this movie. That's why I thought they were yeah just giving up on it. Yeah, the, the, okay. that, that's what I was reading. Of course, I read this from Cinema Blend and like other nerd sites. Um, I've I I read enough time to believe that it was fact. I could be wrong, but I've read enough time today to think that. So, other than that, uh, hey guys, you know, thank you so much for joining me uh, for this discussion, Visible Man. Next week, I'm excited because we're coming back with Parasite, so the movie that won Film of the Year. So, thank you so much, guys. I'll talk to you guys next week for uh, Parasite. Have a good night.